In the 1960s, during the midst of the Cold War, the U.S. conducted a series of nuclear tests not as well known as Hiroshima or Nagasaki, or even Castle Bravo for that matter. But they were intense projects that were highly classified. And in March 2017, the government was actually able to declassify a bunch of these videos, giving us a real window into the midst of the Cold War. <laughs> So what we decided to do today was actually give you guys a look into the stories behind the bombs. So the first part of our journey today actually takes us to the Pacific Missile Range. This is where a lot of the nuclear warheads would start their journey, uh, pretty much in bunkers, silos, you name it. Uh, they would stay here operated by the Navy until they were ready to go out for their testing. Even as controversy rages in high places over the guided missile program, the Navy tests the newest addition to its arsenal of weapons. Looking like a stub-wing pursuit ship, the Regulus churns up the water as it is blasted off the cruiser Helena. Its speed and range remain a secret, but the 30-foot-long missile can be launched from both battleships and carriers, maneuvering close to enemy shores. Tests are also undertaken from the flight deck of the carrier Hancock. Off on its atomic mission. One of the things about Barking Sands, the Pacific Missile Range, is it's, it's the military presence here is a lot different compared to Oahu. Um, it's actually on the island of Kauai, which is in the most northern part of the Hawaiian Atoll, uh, or I guess uh, the most northern part of the Hawaiian Islands, but it's it's a lot more, it's very different in Oahu or Honolulu, you know, the military presence is really heightened, like you can see uh, the Globemasters, the galaxies, as you land in Honolulu, but in Kauai it's very, very, very subtle, right, they, they don't talk too much about it, there's not too much hinting towards it, if you know about it, I mean, uh, I guess you're good to go, but if you don't really know about it, it's kind of, it's, it's not blatantly in the obvious. Um, it, it's a little more, it's kept low key. A little bit of history behind the base, I guess. It's been here for a very long time. It was originally called Amana Airport, and then after uh, changing to a more of a, more of a military you know, kind of base, the U.S. Army picked it all up, picked up all the property, and uh, changed it to Barking Sands. So, this was during the war, they used to fly B-24 Liberators, you know, we're talking C-47s, it all land uh, on Barking Sands tarmac, so, um, they, it's, it's definitely got some history, and it's definitely been a vital part throughout uh, the U.S., you know, I guess the U.S. Navy's warhead history.
so behind me in there that's where the missiles are these are kind of the um, this the, the silos where they hold all the missiles basically they're covered with grass on the top to make it look like from satellite imaging I guess it's kind of like a camouflage type thing but they look like an underground hangar they're so cool check this out got like these big doors in the front that I guess will slide out when they're removing the uh, the ordnance gosh this is pretty cool this is pretty cool guys Inside of there you got all the ventilation system for inside of the hill. But as you can see from this side, like, if you're looking at that on a satellite, you would have no idea that was there. It literally it looks just like a grass field. That, that's pretty crazy. All those nuclear warheads and missiles uh, started off their journey either in that silo or uh, a silo very similar to it. You have no idea how crazy it is to be here right outside like who knows what's in there, right? Like, oh my goodness. With the situation in North Korea escalating throughout the Pacific, Barking Sands has found itself situated in a very interesting spot. With the North Korean nukes now able to reach the United States, the base has been put on alert. Even when filming this, it was hard since the tension was so high around Barking Sands. However, the base has been suiting up to face the threat head-on, deploying its THAAD missiles to Barking Sands, as well as Osan Air Force Base in South Korea. THAAD stands for Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, and it works like this. The radar picks up an incoming threat, that incoming threat is then targeted, and the THAAD vehicle deploys a missile at the target. The missile then matches up with the target mid-flight and uses kinetic energy to disable it. It's been a true military innovation and is protecting the United States. Uh -huh.